Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Frequencies tool in SPSS to help you understand your data. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you could find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. Frequencies is a fantastic tool for actually looking at how data are distributed for a categorical variable. We wouldn't typically use them for continuous variables like age or amount paid, but for categorical variables, they're fantastic. So I'm going to show you how this works on one particular variable, which is minutes watched. Let's take a look at what that variable is. So if I pop over to my variable view, minutes watched is right here, and it's the question of how many minutes people watch YouTube in any given day. And importantly, I asked this question in a categorical manner, and that was done on purpose so that we can use this frequency tool. If we click in on this little ellipse within the values submenu, we find that each of our options is corresponding to a particular set of text. So if somebody selected one, what they really selected was zero minutes or they don't watch. If they selected two, they meant one to 30 minutes per day and so on. This will become really useful in just a moment and you'll see why. So let me cancel out of this. To run a frequency analysis, you go up to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies. That opens up a new window, as you can see right here, where we can put in any variables we want to have a frequency analysis on. I'm just gonna select the one variable of interest minute watched, but you of course can select as many variables as you need to. You pop it over to this variable space, and for now I'm not gonna select any other options, I'm just gonna click okay. Doing so, my output window automatically pops up, and here is my frequency table. What's important is there are some missing values. We know that up here. There's 992 valid responses and eight missing ones. This is real data, that's gonna happen sometimes. What this frequency table does then is tell us how often each of those options were selected by our 992 respondents. Because I put those labels in on the previous screen, we're actually able to see them right here instead of seeing this as option one, two, three, four, five, six, which is really not descriptive and not useful for me when looking at this table. The first column here is just our raw counts of how many people responded to each of these options. So 20 people said that they don't watch YouTube, 357 people said that they watch between one and 30 minutes, and so on. What you'll notice is that there's some missing values. There's eight of them right here. But SPSS knows that the total that it's going to use to compute percentages is that valid total of 992 responses. And that brings us right into our next two columns, percent and valid percent. Percent is the percentage of responses out of all possible values, including the missing values, that are in each of these rows. So for instance, if we look at this option 61 to 120 minutes per day, that's 18.8% out of 1,000. But if we want to know what is it out of the people who actually responded to this question, we look at valid percent, and we'd find that it's actually 19% out of 992. Also very useful is this cumulative percent column, especially when you've got what's called an ordinal scale, which is what this is. As you go down this table, the values increase. So it might be useful to say how many people watch at least between 61 and 120 minutes. Well, the answer is right here. It's the cumulative percentage of people for all the values that are above it. And you can see that pretty easily here. The first one is 2% because there's only one thing for us to add up. The next one is 38%, which is just this 36% over here plus 2%. The next one's 64.9%. That's just our 38% from before plus another 26.9 and so on all the way up to 100%. Importantly, when it calculates cumulative percentages, it does so for the valid cases and not for all cases. So this is pretty straightforward, but I wanna show you some other options that can make this tool much more useful. So if we go back to analyze descriptives frequencies, we see our window still has this variable populated, but I'm gonna ask for a whole bunch of other options. Under statistics, another menu pops up and we can ask for lots of information. I'm gonna ask for just about all of it. We can ask for the quartiles, the cut points, which is gonna give us these buckets of 10, standard deviation, variance, range, minimum, maximum, standard error. I'm gonna look for the central tendencies of mean, median, mode, and the sum, because why not? And I'm also going to ask for characteristics to describe this distribution, which are the skewness and the kurtosis. Those are going to be topics to be discussed in another video. And then I'll click continue. Under charts, I'm going to ask for a histogram, which is going to be a graphical representation of this particular frequency table over here. And I think that's really useful to look at. I'm not going to ask for anything else in format or style because that's more about just how this is displayed, not what information is provided. I'll click OK. And now I get a lot more going on here. So first of all, I get the mean, which isn't that useful for categorical variable, but sometimes it's nice to see that. I see the standard error of that mean, which again, for this type of variable, isn't all that useful. I can see the median response, that's a three. I can see the modal response is a two. I can see all of these statistics summarized here, as well as my percentiles. 
What I also really like is our histogram, which gives us a visual description of what our data look like. So instead of just staring at this table and trying to make sense of it, we have a nice graphical representation to tell us, hey, look, most people are in this second category, which is one to 30 minutes. And then it kind of goes down, right? Not too many people watching a whole lot. And then there's another group, which is in this crazy category of watching more than 180 minutes or three hours of YouTube per day. Those people are pretty interesting. So that's actually it for the frequency table. But I think what might be useful is for you to pause the video right now and try this yourself. And in particular, I'd like you to try it with a variable called modality one. I'll show you that right here in the variable view. It's right here. It's the question of what is the modality and the options are computer, tablet, smartphone, TV, other or none that you're most likely to use when watching YouTube. Give that a try. So go ahead, pause the video right here and see if you can do this on your own and then we'll compare what you got to what I got. Okay, hopefully you've done that. So let's go ahead and see how to do this. I'm gonna go back to analyze descriptives frequencies. For this, I'm gonna remove the minute watch variable because I wanna keep things simple. And I'm gonna add this modality one variable. I'm gonna keep all my other options the same because I wanna see all this extra information. So doing so, you see that first of all, there's no missing values, that's nice. All people responded to this particular question. I've got my summary statistics, but I'm actually much more interested in my frequency table down here. And even more than that, I'm interested in this histogram, which tells me right away, Option number three is the most common. Most people, in fact, 43.7% are watching YouTube on their smartphones. The next most is computer, so they're watching it on their computers. The next most is on their TVs, which to me is quite frankly very surprising. And then it's tablets to round it out. So right away, I get a very quick visual and database description of how people are watching YouTube videos. So frequency tables are incredibly useful when looking at categorical data like this. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.